President Trump says he has no plans to abandon his threat to impose tariffs on Mexico over immigration, even in the face of growing Republican opposition. Now, if those tariffs reach 25% by October, there could be a crippling cost to car buyers, sellers, and automakers. Erica Hill is live in Detroit where they are watching this so closely, Erica. John, there are some estimates that even that just that 5% tariff on auto parts could increase the cost of a new car by some $1,300. So that, of course, begs the question, what will it do to jobs? Well, like many these days, that question depends on who you ask. A proud third-generation Chrysler employee, Chris Vitale works on the engines of the future. I am the engineer's hands. I put things together. For years, politicians have campaigned for the support of the country's nearly one million auto workers. Now their future is linked to immigration and the president's push for stronger borders. I feel like he wouldn't have to resort to that if we had a Senate and a Congress that would enforce the borders. Vitaly, who voted for Obama twice, supports President Trump and his tactics. People have endured much worse than expensive avocados or a few more dollars here and there, you know, to protect the country. And I think that this is this is valid what he's doing. I think it's the wrong way to go about doing it. It makes us look awful in the eyes of the world. And quite honestly, I'm ashamed. Sean Crawford just moved back to his hometown for a job at GM's Flint, Michigan facility after the auto giant announced plans to close the plant where he worked. I've really seen the ups and downs of the auto industry. He worries about his future under Trump. If you raise the price of these products, uh, less people are going to buy them. It's just common sense economics. And if less people buy these products that I'm building every day, then they're going to have to lay people off. How quickly do you think that could happen? Well, in the contract, it says they only have to give you 24-hour notice. This industry will not be able to survive in its current form with the increasing number of tariffs from Mexican goods. It just will not work. And this will directly and immediately affect the American consumer. After 25 years in the volatile auto industry, Vitaly believes they can weather a storm and is confident this president has his back. The idea that somebody would actually fight for us after being told for years and years, oh, you don't matter, you're going the way of the buggy whip. He's won legions of fans for just for doing that. Now, while they may disagree on these tariffs and the implementation and even the impact, one thing they tell me they both are happy to see is that the president is renegotiating NAFTA. They say they would have liked to have seen it done some time ago, and they both pointed out they're happy to see that there is some consideration being made for what Mexican workers will be paid. Of course, the big issue now with the USMCA is whether these tariffs have put it into jeopardy. John, Allison? Erica, thank you very much. I hope there's no tariffs on umbrellas. You sound like you need one there. Thank you very much for all of the great reporting. Let's discuss the possible tariffs against Mexico with Catherine Rampell. She's a Washington Post opinion columnist and CNN political commentator. To quote you, you say these are mind-numbingly idiotic. Hmm. How do you feel about this? Um, how much time do we have? Look, there are so many reasons why this is a wrong-headed proposal. As Erica just pointed out, um, consumers are probably going to bear the brunt of this. If, if you look at past tariffs that this president has already imposed, um, 100% of the costs are, of those t tariffs, which are taxes, by the way, have been passed along to Americans. So it's going to raise the prices for American consumers. It's going to uh, screw up American supply chains, including in the automotive industry, which is already quite vulnerable right now, by the way. Uh, they've announced more layoffs in the auto industry in the first four year, excuse me, first four months of this year um, in like a decade, um, or, or at least several years in any case. So uh, so the auto industry is already vulnerable. Um, lots of other manufacturing um, sectors also depend on basically unfettered trade across the Mexican border. And of course, there are other issues here, including that um, this is going to... Um, uh, mess with our ability to credibly negotiate with China, right? We just signed a new NAFTA deal with Mexico and yet went back on our word and decided to impose new tariffs. And of course, also, if we manage to wreck the Mexican economy, it's going to increase the flow of immigration. Those last two areas, I think, are so interesting because you're talking about this as a policy maneuver. Why are you doing it? To what end? Exactly. And if your goal is to stop the flow of illegal immigration, 
wrecking the Mexican, Mexican economy or hurting the Mexican economy might be counterproductive, directly counterproductive. Absolutely. Uh, part of the reason why there is a flow of immigrants into the United States, a, a large part of it has to do with, um, you know, people fleeing violence and political persecution, but also because there are better ac economic opportunities within the United States. And we can debate whether or not we want more people coming right. here for economic reasons. But at the very least, it will make the United States a much more attractive destination if there are fewer opportunities in Mexico or in other countries. That said... Um, as we know, President Trump often uses a blunt instrument to get his point across. And it does sound as though this threat has gotten Mexico's attention in a way that other things had not. They are sending their leaders, a delegation, to meet with U.S., uh, their counterparts. And it has gotten their attention because it is such a blunt instrument and could do so much harm. So maybe it's just a threat. Who knows? I mean, he said the last thing that he said is that he's quite he's deadly serious about it. But, uh, but why I are we shooting ourselves in the foot? to get Mexico to do something that it actually has very little power to do, right? I mean, it cannot stop the number of people who are coming here seeking asylum Why? under, inter under control, international law. He's saying control your borders. Um, Look, they can they can try, but the problem is that a lot of these people have an, uh, a, a right to apply for asylum in the United States under international agreements. So there, Mexico is actually quite limited in its power to, to do what Trump wants here. And again, even if um, this manages to hurt the Mexican economy to get to get Mexico to come to the table, uh, it's not it's not clear, as I said, what tools it actually has at its disposal, and it will bring a lot of harm to the U.S. economy. Remember, the U.S. economy is basically the only thing that Trump has going for him right now. His approval ratings have been consistently underwater. Uh, there's threats of impeachment and, and, lots of, and, and lots of subpoenas into his financial records. The, the U.S. economy is the only thing keeping him afloat, and yet he seems intent on destroying it. We're actually about to break a record. The United States economy is about to break a record for longest expansion in history, and this is exactly the time when he's trying to break the U.S. economy. You know, I talk to people close to Republican senators, and they say they hope, and right now they're betting on the fact the president's just bluffing here. Do you I, think that's true? I think Trump has gotten more pushback for these tariffs from Republicans in particular than he was expecting, because Republicans know that if, in fact, these tariffs go through, it will endanger lots of sectors that are critical uh, for Republicans' reelection chances, right? So if Trump destroys the manufacturing sector, if Trump destroys the farming sector, and the farming industry has already uh, been under a lot of stress, that could put them at risk. So yes, presumably, uh, you know, there, uh, Republicans don't want a confrontation here. Maybe Trump will back off. Yeah, it doesn't sound like he's bluffing. But if he okay. is bluffing, he has gotten Mexico's attention. But it, at the moment, it doesn't sound like it. Catherine Rampal, thank you thank very you. much for all the insights.